everyone and uh, welcome to the demo for the bubble flowers. This is a simple layering technique using clear builder gel and in my case I use gel paints but you can use other paint options like acrylic paint or gel polish. There are a multitude of ways that you can um, add uh, different effects. You can uh, use different uh, colors on one paintbrush to kind of give it a one-stroke feel. You can use uh, glitters and caviar. Um, you can uh, do a different flower, uh, like in the case of the uh, daisy. Uh, I did a small one and I did a large one. And uh, the two larger uh, balls there are done with just one color. And again, in this case, I used some uh, IBD hard gel. It's a very viscous uh, hard gel, but you can use a uh, clear top coat. If you do, just be aware it's not going to be obviously as thick as your uh, builder gel is going to be, your hard gel. But again, you can certainly use a top coat. Uh, just know your layers are going to be thinner, and you won't get as much definition between uh, your petals. And uh, for this demo, I'm going to be using Moira uh, Dream On, beautiful pink color. And my suggestion is that you use a, a very sharp tool uh, for easy removal once you're finished. I tried this on uh, my smallest size dotting tool, and uh, I almost couldn't get it off the end of it. So. Uh, again, anything that has a pointed end, doesn't necessarily have to be needle sharp, uh, is going to work best for when it comes time to remove your bead off of your um, tool. So that's what I would recommend uh, for that. And to paint the petals, I'll be using this uh, EMI KZ-000 brush. It is a uh, flat uh, brush that uh, makes uh, very nice um, petal shapes. So we'll get our supplies together here and we'll get started. So again you'll need your um, builder gel. This is a again just a simple uh, dip, cure, paint, cure, dip, cure, paint, cure and so on technique. Very simple to do. So you dip your your tool into your uh, gel and let it settle into a nice round shape and then we're going to cure it. Now if you're using a less viscous or, or in other words a, a thinner gel you'll need to make sure that you kind of twirl it around in your light to make sure you keep a nice round shape to it. And just to kind of build up that initial ball just a little bit more. I'm going to dip it again. Again let it settle. Get a nice round shape. Doesn't have to be perfectly round. And again we're going to cure. Uh, the IBD cures in 30 seconds so that's what I'm going to do. Now in my sample nail here I've used some very very fine uh, caviar beads that my friend Angela sent me. These are Czech glass cavi uh, caviar uh, beads and I'm going to just dip it in there because I still have the sticky layer and I'm going to coat with that super fine uh, caviar beads. Now because of the nature of the um, domed or uh, parabolic look that you're getting from your uh, round uh, surface. These are going to appear more magnified uh, than they do to the eye once you start uh, layering your gel around it. That's why I chose to use the this micro uh, caviar beads. And in this case I went ahead and used the top coat to coat that because if I had dipped that in the gel, in the hard gel, those beads would have just slipped right off. And I cured that for the 30 seconds and now we're ready to paint our petals. Now initially I start out um, on uh, the smaller initial ball. 
I start out with about two petals. You don't want to cover, if you want some of those uh, gold or whatever uh, you're making for your centers, if you want those to show, then I would suggest that you do uh, only two petals, two smaller sized petals, so some of that can peek through. And you're going to basically paint a wide, wider at the top, narrower at the bottom, and this is whatever shape that you would like, but you don't want to, again, to cover up that entire top of the ball. That's if you have some sort of, um, again, that you something that you want to see. If you want to start by simply painting that, that clear ball with, say, the pink paint, and then curing that, and then dipping it, and then coming in and starting your petals after that, you can certainly do that. So I've cured that, and now I'm dipping it into the clear gel once again. Just twirl off the excess. And then we're going to let that settle at the top. Let gravity do its work. Let it settle. Keep turning it kind of like a glass blower would to get that into a nice, even, round shape. And now we're ready to go ahead and cure that. Make sure that you move your gels out of the way before uh, turning on your light. Now for the second layer of petals, I like to come in and basically uh, do a second set of two petals in between the two that I painted. Also when painting the petals, it's best to uh, paint them slightly below the uh, tops of the uh, previous petals that you painted. And each successive row of petals that you do after each dip, you want to do that. You want to keep the uh, tops of those petals slightly below your previous set of petals. This will help uh, enhance that 3D uh, feel to your flower. If you overlap, if you go over, paint over the uh, previous petals, uh, you're just going to obscure what's beneath it and that's, uh, that's not going to lend to your 3D effect here. All right, we're ready to do the next set of petals. And uh, from here I do uh, about three petals for uh, each dip after this. Again, keeping each petal slightly below the previous ones. And then we'll go ahead and cure that. You can see that's really, that definition's really coming out with each layer of gel that you do. Now, uh, again, after curing, coming in and painting our fourth set of petals. Now, if you decide to use your uh, top coat for this, uh, your layers won't be as thick, and uh, the downside to that is you don't get that kind of magnified um, defined uh, kind of shadow and light. There's a little bit less of that. You can still see it, but there's a little less of that because your gel's not quite as thick and it's not giving it um, the space it needs for the shadowing effect of the petals. We'll do our final dip here. Let that settle and you get that gorgeous 3D effect. So once again after curing for the 30 seconds that's now ready to top coat. The reason I'm top coating is because the um, 
IBD has a sticky layer, so I'm going to use a light coating of the uh, No Wipe top coat. In this case, it's Le Chat Murano, a very, um, very nice uh, No Wipe top coat. Slightly thicker than the accents uh, and cures for 60 seconds rather than 30, but it is still a very nice uh, No Wipe top coat and we'll cure that for the recommended 60 seconds. And here is our bubble rose out of the lamp. You can see that gorgeous 3D effect and how those multiple layers of the gel have magnified that caviar in the center. It's a gorgeous play of light and shadow. Now to remove it from your tool, simply grab a hold of the uh, bead and give it a good twist and it should just pop right off the end of that. And you'll see you have a little stem there and to remove that you can either use your uh, coarse grit file uh, to file that down. Uh, it'll take a little work uh, depending on how thin you file that uh, you want that file to so in this case I'm going to use a uh, e-file if you're going to use an e-file just be sure that you grab a hold of that quite firmly you don't want that shooting off uh, and then also with the e-file you'll find that you can actually give this kind of a concave um, filing this way you can make it a little bit concave where it can actually fit conform better to the curve of the nail so file that to your desired thinness you can go pretty thin on this if you like if you don't want such a high profile bead on your nail uh, give it a little spritz with alcohol wipe off the dust and there is your 3d bubble rose Now I'm going to tell on myself here. You know, I'm always saying how easy these techniques are to do. And while the actual dipping and painting was pretty easy, getting the effect that I was trying to go for was not that easy. I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. And uh, on this one, I actually used my smallest dotting tool and I actually had to chip away uh, from that uh, because there was still just the tiniest bit of a ball on the end of that and it just would not come off so um, I got my needle tool on this one I finally figured that out but I realized my mistake was not painting each petal basically covering uh, from top to bottom uh, the outside surface and that was the reason I wasn't getting the look I was going for in these initial practices that I was doing. So learn from my mistake. And again, we can do different effects. On this one, I added some uh, diamond holographic uh, shapes that I just kind of put into the sticky layer and then um, dip that way. There's some caviar beads in there as well. You get kind of a disco ball effect there. This one has two different colors, a lilac and a peach, along with that gold caviar in the center. So many choices that you can use for this. Have a daisy type look. You can see the when you turn it to the side you can see those different uh, layers of the petals in there. This one didn't come out as well as I was hoping. Is there, that's a Swarovski uh, crystal uh, in there. It has to hit the light just right for you to kind of see the difference uh, with that uh, Swarovski in there. But different crystals will give you a better look. Uh, this one was uh, using two different colors on one brush to kind of give it a striated look. Lighter colors look especially nice for this technique because you get that really nice, awesome play of light and shadow coming through uh, the layers of the gel. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the demo. Here's another look at the sample nail that I did. Check the info box below for links to where you can purchase the products. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them down at the bottom for me. 
And as always, I appreciate everybody's time. And uh, if you like the video, go ahead and subscribe. And until next time, I will see you guys later.